Most people kind of suck at Valorant, and today I want to have a heart-to-heart -heart about everyone's favorite role and least favorite teammate, the duelist or entry fragging agent. You see, because of freaks of nature like Tenz and Asuna, a lot of people seem to think that entry fragging on Jet or Reyna is this glamorous romp through the map where you utterly steamroll the other team and waltz your way to victory. Unfortunately for many of us, it's not that easy. Bruh. But don't worry, we're going to address that here in a minute. First, I want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Valorant Tracker, which actually helped me come to terms with my legitimately poor duelist play and it helped me embrace the role of full-time smoker and spike planter. Valorant Tracker shows your stats on all agents, games, and weapons so you can better understand your performance and track improvement. Grab it from the links below and tell me in the comments what your best and worst performing agents are by their win rate. The reality of the competitive queue trenches is brutally uncoordinated pileups in a choke point or even worse, the dreaded lurking duelist who desperately needs to just go in first for your team. While professional teams might boast the coordination to actually use utility for each other, chances are in the games that you and I are playing, the only way you're going onto a site is by whipping out your big veiny arm and pushing your way into the enemy defenses. For real, it can feel like the beaches of Normandy sometimes out here in the solo queue streets. But even if you don't have the aim or magical powers of your favorite anime protagonist, you can still have fun and success by playing Entry Duelist if you follow these four main principles. Number one, Entry Fraggers get things done when they need to get done. There comes a time in almost every round of Valorant where something just has to happen. Either the attackers need to break onto a site to plant or the defenders need to push for a retake. Sometimes a team just needs to take some map control and gather information about enemy locations. Some agents can do this with utility, but the entry duelist uses their body for the cause. I guess I should clarify that entry doesn't have to be a duelist, but by default, the duelist characters are equipped with the best utility to break a choke point or fight into a blind corner. Because of this, most of the responsibility for going in first should be theirs. I'm sure we've all been there stacked up behind a Phoenix arena waiting for them to flash everyone in and now I'm triggered just thinking about it. Please just go in. Being a reliable entry fragger means conquering your fear of the unknown and is in some ways like playing one of those jump scare games where you just have to kind of suck it up and get surprised some of the time. You essentially control the ability for your teammates to go forward and if you tell them that you're gonna run in first, there's a reasonably good chance that they will follow you. After all, they're all probably quietly hoping that they don't have to be the first one to die. Speaking of death, let's talk about number two, don't care about your kill death ratio because that is terrible and has no place in the mind of an entry fragger. An entry fragger is the most alpha of chads or chattises because they have transcended the need for top fragging, exchanging flashy highlights for consistently good site entries and retakes for the team. This has become extra apparent with the meta shift away from Jet to Chamber, where the op role and the entry role have finally been split. It's not uncommon to see a pro team with their entry duelist posting a very bad kill death ratio in winning games because they are quite literally throwing their body into the line of fire so teammates can effectively pinpoint where enemies are and take them out. As an entry, your goal is to try and just get in and create as much chaos as possible for the other team, and the more of them that focus you, the less of them will be able to shoot back at your teammates. Who should be right behind you, by the way? Dashing on a site and dying is only a good play if your teammates can trade you, otherwise you're just tossing the round away. Notice the proper spacing in this example as Paper Rex goes into the site. Not too close to get immediately sprayed down or collided, but certainly close enough to trade each other out as people fall. You see, this is the entire concept of trading in Valorant. On attack, you have the numbers advantage because the defense will be split across multiple sites. Five attackers approach a site, two defenders start shooting, one defender kills the entry, the entry's teammate kills the defender, the other defender kills that teammate, and another teammate kills the second defender. Simple math, site control acquired. If the entry fragger finds the first kill before dying, the equation gets even more lopsided. The third principle we need to talk about is going the extra mile because as an entry fragger, you tend to be one of the best agents in the game at aggressively taking map control by yourself. This is even more true if you're playing a character with a movement ability because it 
helps you close the gap faster to a flashed enemy or potentially even beat a timing to somewhere on the map that is surprising to the other team. It was actually through looking at Valorant Tracker that this idea really became clear to me because I was looking at some of the jet guides under the guides tab and all of them seem to be aggressive updraft spots to get kills with Bladestorm and it made me realize that I'm a much more conservative player when I get ahead and around and while simply playing for the numbers advantage is usually correct some rounds you absolutely have to keep pushing the pace and going deeper into enemy territory to take an aggressive fight. If we imagine that we just planted the spike and the other team has a breach or brimstone ultimate defending the spike plant might be kind of difficult if you sit back. So instead of trying to waste time until the spike explodes the better option might be to go find that breach and take them out before they can use their ultimate or at least have them wasted on you. It's easy to understand this concept if I just show you this round by Paper Rex, where you can see that they've lost the pistol round and now face much better weapons for the defenders. We can also kind of see where the plan starts with this shorty being purchased by Forsaken on the Yoru. And as the round starts with noise and shower, Forsaken sends his teleport into lamps for a flash teleport that allows him to get up close and personal with his shotgun. When no one defends this push and multiple teammates go down in showers in that fight, Forsaken knows that he has to go find some value with his positioning advantage. He pushes towards the defender's spawn and is here so quickly that he actually catches the footsteps of a rotating enemy as they head up to heaven. This is such an unexpected place to be for an attacker right now that Forsaken is able to actually walk up behind the defending Yoru and blast him down with a double shorty shot. This drops a big weapon and is about to demonstrate why buying a rifle second round can kind of be a risky move. For Forsaken jumps down to grab the Vandal, and this is where he demonstrates the fourth key point of playing the entry fragging role, which is knowing when to be patient. This is where so many really skilled players will throw rounds because with the extra momentum gained by getting a kill and grabbing the Vandal, and also knowing where at least two enemies are in showers, it would be very easy for Forsaken to get over aggressive when trying to help his teammate. There's three main problems with playing this way. First of all, the defending team now knows exactly where Forsaken is, so the advantage of surprise is gone. Secondly, Forsaken still doesn't know where Sova is, and third, there's a pesky Killjoy turret sitting on top of the triple boxes, so by freezing he gives the defenders a chance to make a mistake by coming to look for him through the smoke, or for Sova to potentially show up late and isolated. Team Secret shows some pretty good discipline here by not overplaying, and this forces Forsaken and Benkai to try and make a play together in showers. Benkai tries to distract the showers players which lets Forsaken get just close enough to do some damage. He finds the first kill and pushes Brimstone away from the spike, and from there the mechanics and game sense just take over. So while you or I might not have the same skill level as Forsaken, taking and applying these main concepts can still have a huge impact in our ability to win games of Valorant. Just remember that if you are running face first into enemy players in their spawn, you still need to communicate where they are otherwise all of your hard work is for nothing.